Hello, everyone. Welcome to Servo Motion Application Without Leaving Home webinar. First, I would like to introduce myself. My name is David. I'm the head of motion control in Neutronics. Uh, this webinar is part of our Control During Crisis series. Uh, in this webinar specific, I'm going to discuss uh, servo capabilities and, and remote servo uh, uh, techniques. Some other topics I will cover during the presentation are uh, everyday challenges with servo operation and maybe some additional ones that were generated by this current crisis. Uh, I will show you the Unitronics One integrated solution concept and, and like a servo overview for what we offer you. At the end of the webinar, I will also share with you application stories and case studies, some videos of those. Uh, I'll have some time to ask questions and I'll do my best to answer those. So if you don't mind, I would like to uh, get started. So during the that crisis we're currently facing, we, find, we, we got to understand how important is accessibility to your equipment, to your machines, to your people, to your working space. And, and now accessibility is not that obvious, okay? So it generated a lot of difficulties. Among them are the lack of uh, ability for for you to access your maybe machines during the r d time maybe prototypes maybe uh, uh, some malfunctions at on customer sites installations and and due to that the remote access is something became more and more common and in use okay so if you're using unitronics product so far you shouldn't worry because we got you covered and if you don't I think it's a good idea to listen. Okay, so except from having the remote access, I would like also to share with you the possibility and, and the technique how you can carry out motion application tasks from anywhere at any time. So I would start with the common servo challenges. Okay, the main uh, challenges I can say it's divided for two. Uh, aspects. One of them is the amount of tools and knowledge you should have. Uh, if you are designing or building a machine that has servo implemented inside, means you probably have something multidisciplinary because it has servos. It means it has definitely has some mechanisms. It has some software, probably some electronics. So we're starting to see something that is more complex. Okay, and, and when working and, and designing and implementing these kind of products, you should probably have some tools to design your system. Uh, you should probably use in the past or using uh, with servo configuration and, and tuning tools. Communication uh, implementation and diagnostics also need to carry out in, 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 by you. Uh, in addition to logic development and eventually even the HMI design is something that needs to uh, be ta being taken care of since eventually the end user doesn't care about anything. He cares about his design and the machine to work. Okay, so that's in terms of multiple tools you should use. In addition to that, and maybe even because of that, you probably should have a skill set of people, employees, workers that should know to use these tools and, and provide these capabilities. So you should have someone that deals with the mechanics, a mechanical engineer probably, someone to deal with the electronics and the electrics and the electricity. So it's an electrical engineer, someone to deal with the communication and the control, probably a control engineer and, and some even system integrators eventually that execute those uh, operations. Okay. So these are common servo challenges all around the, all around the world on any time. However, this current crisis and, and, and the pandemic, uh, I think they created two additional uh, 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 challenges. I'm not sure if these are two new challenges. However, they emphasize those challenges and, 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 and they make them be more difficult and, and meaningful. So the manpower issue, so it's like, uh, I would say, uh, skilled employees are always a rare resource. But now during the, the crisis, um, I think the challenge is even bigger since you, 
you can find on your company and other companies, uh, on your customers' companies, you can find less employees, uh, employees that work less hours, like partial hours, partial position. Uh, uh, you have some restrictions for visits and traveling, uh, etc. So the integrated part, which I'm going to talk about in our solution, it simplifies uh, 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 the need because of a single solution, and that's a key to assist you with that, okay? Because you need one man to deal with what I'm going to show you, okay? Yeah. And, and adding to that, there is the remote control uh, movements that you now try to st to try to implement since you are locked down. <laughs> okay, so can we simplify a servo operation? Can we do it remotely? <laughs> so before I'll go straight to the answer, I would like to show you a, a brief explanation about our solution. Uh, that's a video found on YouTube and, and due to the fact it's a webinar I think it might be a bit laggy. However, I think it works pretty much okay so it can be benefit beneficial. Okay. Unitronics servo made simple, motion control has never been easier. Using advanced software, Unitronics new servo solution simplifies the operations involved in motion control, rationalizing and streamlining the workflow. First, a look at our hardware. Unitronics offers a full line of rugged, high quality servo drives and motors. all seamlessly supported by our award-winning PLCs, HMIs, IOs, and VFDs. In configuring your hardware, communications, and all aspects of your motion control application, we've done most of the work for you with our superbly efficient and easy-to-use software studio development environments. At the heart of our offering, Unitronics' groundbreaking servo-made simple method eliminates the complex operations associated with motion control, bringing you incredibly useful simplifications. We provide ready-made motion code, enabling various capabilities. Our built-in system integration capabilities let you perform any number of tasks at the tap of a screen, even on your mobile. Unitronics provides you with system-wide control and visibility. You can tune your motion performances using a single parameter and view servo runtime performance via our software studio, powerful built-in high-speed scope. With Unitronics' novel integrated control and automation solution, you can rest assured that the components of your application will all work seamlessly together. You'll enjoy a single software for all PLC, HMI, and motion aspects, ready-made, easily modifiable code for instant motion, and a quick learning curve with simplified workflow and guaranteed integration. Effortless integration of all Unitronics products with broad plug-and-play communication capabilities, with an efficient supply for all your motion and control applications. Building on decades of excellence in control and award-winning innovations, Unitronics is proud to present the industry with an end-to-end -end motion control solution. Servo made simple. The easy path to motion control. We couldn't find plastic waste. We devoured a bottle. Okay, so that was uh, an introduction, a brief one to our solution and 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 the capabilities and the product range and so on and after understanding that and trying to imagine the system architecture this is basically what you should have in order to support what i'm going to talk about today okay so you should have your plc connected to a pc or to the internet directly uh, this uh, controller 
probably has some local or remote IOs. It can have also some VFDs connected to it and our servos, drives and motors. Okay, so this is how Unitronics one integrated solution architecture look like. Uh, while the added value we, we, we generate out of it is the integrated solution. And an integrated solution is, means you have one programming environment and one vendor to provide you that. A single point for support, okay? So you can address our support with all of these components and, and the combination for those. And eventually it saves you time, okay? So can we work remotely with mechanical movements? Now that's a very interesting question because I don't think you gotta try doing that a lot. However, let's think about it. Why not actually, why not? I mean, can I commission a movement? Yes. Can I understand what, what happens during the movement? So my answer is yes, we can. Uh, um, before we'll do that, I am going to ask you to make sure that your system is designed to work safely and properly. Uh, so the basics of the basics would be having some limit switches like hardware limit switches, uh, maybe even designing some hard stops and bumpers and not to damage your mechanics if it reaches the end of travel. Uh, and your system also should have self-holding capabilities. It can be a holding brake or maybe working with a ball screw and a pitch that is relatively uh, uh, small. However, you sh the, the system should be able to hold itself in position when not powered, okay? Or if something happens or disconnection. Uh, except from that, please make sure no one is near the machine during the execution. So, uh, you won't get injured due to the fact you're executing the movements, okay? Since you're controlling remotely, think about it. If someone is just trying to reposition a sensor or maybe fix a wiring or, or even lubricating some, some components in the machine and all of a sudden start moving rapidly, it might hurt him badly. So please, please make sure you're not executing movements without assuring no one is near the machine, okay? So, how can you work and, and operate the system remotely? The first phase would be commissioning, okay? So, when we define the servo axis, I would recommend you to limit the torque on the axis interface to a value that is less than 1,000. It can be even less than that. And, and the reason I'm asking is uh, basically, the first one is to prevent damaging your mechanics. That's why maybe you should even limit the torque for less than that on the first operation. Okay, so you would be able to control it. And, and if you did something wrong, no damage will occur due to that. In addition to that, uh, if you work with the value that is under than 1000, it prevents overcurrent alarm from appearing. and, and Overcurrent alarm can be reset. However, if it happens more than once or twice, then you should uh, cycle the drive's power. And in order to do that, you need to design the system in a way that you can do it logically. Okay. So this is how it looks like on the access interface. You can see the torque options, positive torque limit and negative torque limit. So if from some reason you have different torque limitations, uh, you can do that. The next step would be commissioning the movements, okay? Uh, uh, so what we did, we defined the maximum torque. Now we'll start jogging the system slowly, okay? Until uh, we'll see the current rising or the positive or negative over travel alarm appears. Okay, so how it looks like. You have our uh, HMI with the ready-made motion code. Under motion tab, you have the jog control. Okay, so when you click the jog and jog right, like jog backward or forward, 
you would see the position, the velocity, and the torque value changing. So if you're starting seeing the torque rising more and more, and, and the, in that situation, you should halt or you should even jog to the other direction and then the torque will not be that high and will not cause any damage. In addition to that, if you will have limit switches and you will reach your limit switches, you will see the error for the limit switches right here. Under no errors, you'll see a, a yellow tab with the positive or negative over travel alarm. Okay. So after you did that, you discovered your limitations for the backward and the forward uh, uh, value, position value. You can execute position movements because you know what is the allowed range. Okay. In addition to that, you can do a homing according to the homing method and, and, and the hardware you, you implemented on your uh, machine. And if you don't, you also have the possibility to execute homing with hard stop. So the axis will go until it feels some uh, uh, resistance according to what you define. And then it will do its homing according to that. Okay. Next step. You can use our diagnostic trace to tune your servo, okay? Uh, I would recommend recording the velocity actual value and the actual current value. Uh, and the way to tune it, it's pretty easy. If you see meaningful oscillations or high peaks during constant velocity part uh, of the motion profile, it should be uh, um, pretty obvious that we're talking about two high gains. It, it would look like that. You can see, can you see the left one? In the, on the left one, we can see the green is the torque actual value. You can see it jitters a lot and, and, and reaching very high values relatively. And, and on the right uh, uh, side, you can see the velocity motion profile, the trapezoidal movement. And then you can see the current relatively with the same value during constant velocity phase, that phase. Okay, so here, as I told you, you can see higher oscillations for the current and for the velocity. And here everything is more uh, uh, um, controlled and on a better manners. Okay, and I can say that if you were close to the machine, when having a system that acts like that, you would probably hear the squeaky noises or see some vibrations. And here it won't happen, okay? In addition to that, if you want to have more advanced tuning and, and maybe also get to better settling time and so on, you can record your target position and the following error value. And, and you would see how long it takes you to get to the desired value, <clears throat> sorry. And, 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 <clears throat> and how small is your position error during the movement. So, Let's say you did that, you did the recording, now you want to change the gains. How can it be uh, executed? So if you're using our uh, diagnostics interface uh, and, and you use our ready-made motion code, you will have these whole screens and, and, and tabs. So you go to the tuning tab, you click the tuning tab and all you need to do is just change your servo gain. That's a, one parameter. You can change it by tapping a number. You can drag it to increase or decrease it. And basically that's it. Now the servo gains changed on the fly. So when you saw that graph, it's the same recording. I didn't stop anything. I just changed the values of the servo gain and it affected immediately. Okay. So if I'll summarize the commissioning and diagnosing part, diagnosing part, first, when you uh, uh, define your axis, you must uh, know that to limit your torque, maybe even limiting your speed, but it's up to you in, in the next command, so it's not that critical. Um, you should make sure you move the axis first to the direction uh, you want to go. You should de detect the edges of your application and then you can execute some position movements then later on you can uh, tune your servo using the diagnostics trace uh, and see how the axis uh, acts okay according to the movements you will uh, execute 
Now, the second part would be the pro programming, okay? So, when you program, assuming you used our interface, uh, please make sure the ready-made motion code uh, uh, we provide is not being called when not needed. And the reason for that, that is pretty simple. If you want to execute your application and our uh, ready-made motion diagnostics application is running, it will interact, okay? And it will disturb your application and you won't understand why it's not working properly, okay? Usually, it will not let you uh, enable the drive, so it will stop very, I can say, very safely from causing damage. However, it's not a good idea, and, and please make sure you're not calling these uh, function uh, uh, during not, when not needed, okay? Uh, after doing that, you can use our motion control function blocks according to your needs, okay? It depends on your application. Um, please make sure when you're writing the code, when you're programming, to monitor the alarm code on the access struct and monitor the limit switches state during the commissioning. Because when you look on a system, it does, you don't necessarily do that on the initial stages because say, hey, I'm, 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 I'm close by. So if something happens, I would see on the drive the error and, and what's happening and so on. But since you're not there, I highly recommend monitoring the alarm code and the limit switch state. Um, after doing some programming, you should verify proper movement using your uh, diagnostics trace, like I showed you before. Since our scope is, is connected, it's part of Unilogic, and it's connected to the PLC, and the PLC is connected to the drive, that's an added value we provide you that you cannot obtain with additional drives, because many additional drives should be connected to the PC directly using some communication and adapters and so on, while here in Unitronic, since I showed you our system architecture, you're always connected to your drives. So when you work remotely with your uh, uh, controller, you're also working remotely with your servo, okay? So you can execute the diagnostic trace, you can record for a lot of time and see the entire behavior during the movement, okay? It's not just, just like a buffer or something like that, it records continuously. Any questions so far? Let me see on the question uh, uh, section. Okay, I don't see anything. So um, if you have anything, please ask. If not, uh, I will have another uh, uh, slide for questions. So you can write it down and I'll do my best to answer that later on, okay? So now I want to discuss about why should you use Unitronics. So according to the challenges we talked about at the beginning of the, um, of the session, we try to see how can we simplify. And, and the reason for simplification is exactly what I talked about before, okay? So Unitronics, first of all, offer you all-in-one software, okay? So everything is under Unilogic. You have some capabilities under Visilogic as well. But basically, when you're working with Unitronics, you need a single software and, and it's, it's comprehensive, okay? Uh, so you don't need additional tools. You don't need to train people uh, uh, on additional tools because all they need to know is a single software and it's unified. I mean, the interface is actually the same. Everything is the same, okay? In addition to that, many times when you integrate components, you have the communication integration. We all know communication integration is the most complex, annoying part on, on the integration itself. I can say, according to my experience, the integration, the, com the full communication integration might take between 60 to 65, 70% of the time and effort for, for uh, a standard application. Uh, having sustainable communication uh, uh, um, that works properly, okay? In Unitronics, all you need to do is drag a function block, and that function blocks 
uh, a function block manage the communication automatically. So, so all you need to do, for example, in order to enable the, the servo is select this the axis and, and add a bit for enabling, okay? Mechanics. One of the greatest new things we developed was our axis uh, uh, interface with our mechanical properties tool. When you are working with different components, different servos, you need to do a mechanical calculation all of the, all the time. The basic reason for that would be unit conversion. So we need to convert encoder value to some rotary movement, to some actuators and gears, and, and so on. And eventually to translate that to what you're going to program with. So in Unitronics software, you can select each component individually according to its data sheet. You can also ask the machine designer to provide the information about each of those once, just once. And after that, we are calculating the values and we're recommending safe values for your application. So you won't damage your mechanics uh, for the short uh, uh, term and also for the long term. Like if the gear can withstand 4,000 RPM uh, and you would program it, uh, your application and work in 4,500, you won't see any damage uh, on, on the short range. However, the gear will wear very fast and, and, and you won't be able to know that until you need to replace it. And since you provide the machine, you probably have to pay for it for yourself and, and, and customer will not bear the costs. Okay, so it also can save some. It, so I would say this kind of interface is, is first of all pretty unique and, and easy to operate. In addition to that, it minimizes errors. Okay, I can tell you that in the next version we'll have we'll have some additional actuators and additional capabilities, but I don't want to tell you all the secrets. So why should you use Unitronics? Um, we offer PLC open based function blocks for the motion. Okay, so if you worked with the other Unitronics, Unitronics product and you're were familiar with the letter, instead of programming something like that, all you need to do is drag a function block for a move relative, and that's it. And if you w hadn't worked with Unitronics yet, and you're familiar with some motion capabilities and programming, these would be easy to implement since they're based on the industry widest standard. Another very interesting, powerful feature is the built in diagnostics interface. I showed you part of it on the first part of the session, and, and I can have a short brief and show you what's in there. So basically, you can enable or disable limit switches. You can look on your input state in the drive, the drive's input state. You get continuously the state for the communication and, and uh, the axis and the position, actual uh, 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 value, and so for the velocity and torque values. In addition to that, you can see the error state continuously. So you can define limit switches. You can change all the axis relevant parameters from that interface. Sorry. You can execute all kinds of single axis movement. It could be a jog. It could be jog limited by time. And it could be even position or cyclic position. It means back and forth. Uh, you can select the same motion profile or different motion profiles uh, uh, and the amount of cycles. And it just works. OK, so you don't need to program anything in order to install your machine. And, and, and do some uh, integration. After you finish the integration, then it's your time for programming. But before that, there's no need, okay? You can also execute homing and tune your servo as we discussed before. And that's something I haven't talked about yet, but you can also monitor your system and record that to uh, this trend. This trend samples in 10 milliseconds, so it's very relevant, relevant for uh, I would say torque over time, if it's not just jittering torque. Uh, but in addition to that, it's relevant for velocity and position values. 
that can be recorded to the SD on, on the uh, PLC or to the flash drive. Okay, and that's built in. You don't need to do anything in order to make it happen. So if I'm trying to summarize what we discussed so far is Unitronics try to simplify the implementation for your motion applications. Doing that using one unified software environment uh, that eventually assists you with minimizing complexity and reduce the development time and development skill set. So you don't need as much people as you would need before. Uh, in addition to that, the programming is pretty easy. Uh, uh, using the PLC Open uh, uh, compliant function box for the motion. So even if you weren't programming with Unitronics yet and you're just starting, it should be pretty easy. Um, so adding to that the remote, uh, the remote access uh, capabilities, you can do all of that anywhere at any time. And it's all free of charge because the Unitronics concept is you pay for your hardware and that's it. Everything is included. Okay, I can see there are some questions, but I would like to uh, proceed and I'll answer them uh, at the end of the session if that's okay with you. So what kind of applications can you uh, uh, implement our servos at? So I can say that on the packaging industry, there are many applications that you can find uh, useful with our servos. Some pick and place applications or material handling you can have applications for conveyors or for dosing applications. In addition, even applications for torque and force control like clamping or capping uh, uh, can be done with our servo pretty easily. And the next slide, I'm going to show you some application stories uh, with the Unitronics equipment. As with the, vi the previous video I showed you, it will be probably a bit laggy However, I've asked our marketing department uh, to send links for so, some of these videos that, are, uh, 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 that can be viewed over the web. So you'll have some links to that so you can watch them later uh, with higher quality. Uh, let's start, for, for example, with an application for packaging. Uh, that's a palletizing application. Our customer uh, built a robot. That's, that robot is unique it was designed and built by our customer and what is doing is doing palletizing okay so you can see the added value with by working with this kind of robot is that it, it can carry relatively high payload and it has very high range i mean it's very long please note that though it's a robot all the movements are single axis movements. So you can see that every axis is moving one by one or regardless of other axis movements. Okay, so even if few axes are moving at the same time, it's not dependent, okay? Okay, I think that was clear. I would skip to the next video. Uh, that's a punching machine made in India. You can see the first servo grabs the uh, metal profile, pull it inside. Then you, in the machine, there are three punchers, three hydraulic punchers, and they punch the profile on different locations with, with different uh, 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 shapes of punching, okay? And the second one, that's the second servo, is the one that's responsible for extracting the profile outside.
That machine is working 24 seven. And it currently works great. Okay, it was performed by uh, Shear Automation in India. You can saw the you can see the unit stream there. Um, let's select another one. Let's make a pick and place one. That's a big pick and place robot. The entire uh, uh, palletizing application is done by uh, Unitronics, so it consists also our VFDs and our servos. You can see the pallet gets there, and then the server place like a foil or paper at the bottom, okay, and separates between layers. Okay, I think it's pretty pretty clear. Um, let me show you some capping application for example that's uh, that's an application recorded during the integration itself you can see that the, the three servos that are responsible for uh, i can say screwing with con with specific torque uh, through different screws so each of them has different tool and is uh, 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 operates different amount of torque on both direction. I mean, it opens first in order to make sure it's in position, and then it closes it using torque. Okay, that's that's a, 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 that was recorded during the integration, so the pace is pretty slow. Uh, you can see that's a Unitronics motor. Okay. Um, that's the electrical cabinet. You can see three servos and a, a VFD. Uh, it's not fully wired, so it's a bit a mess, but as I mentioned, it was part of the integration. In the right side, you can see also our local IOs. So that, that's that's one integrated solution by Unitronics, totally. And I have another application. It's not a video. However, I think it will be nice to share. So that's a customer in France. Um, he built a machine with three access, two servos and a VFD. Uh, the machine is doing like a cut, like kind of milling on a cylinders that comes from a nuclear plant and, and they needed to do it in order to measure the amount of radiation, okay, the radiation level to make sure that the, 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 the uh, nuclear plant uh, procedures are okay and nothing wrong there. So all, it, all the customer needs to do is just take the system, put it on the cylinder with these magnets and then it has two vertical servo axes in order to determine the position of the cut and a VFD to run an AC motor as the um, spindle, okay? So let's summarize the added value our servo solution provides you. For, first of all, one unified software platform. The communication is automatic, the complexity can be truly minimized, uh, including mechanism and, and mechanical components meanings. Uh, uh, we have and offer you embedded diagnostics tools on the HMI itself and on Unilogic uh, as a software. The motion control programming is according to PLC open standard function box. And we offer a wide range of servos between 50 watt to 5 kilowatt and even accessories to make everything connect easily. I can show you an example for the accessories. I mean, it, it starts from the line filters with IO terminal blocks and braking resistors. It comes eventually, you can even have the um, canvas accessories for having the wires and, and the connection to be, I would say, more easy than that. It's, it's, it's not even possible. I mean, if you would use our canvas accessories, the communication would be eventually using standard CAT5e Ethernet cables, so nothing else is needed. And 
even a communication adapter between the drives to the PC in order to update firmware or things like that. Like that. Okay. So now I'd like to address some questions. Okay, I can see some of those. Um, in, yeah, I have a question uh, about VisiLogic and does that support our servo motion? Uh, the answer is yes. We have servo interface for VisiLogic as well. Uh, I can talk about the differences, but I think it's really understood that since we, UniLogic is way newer software so Unilogic can offer powerful more powerful solution and, and additional tools however the solution in terms of the integration is ex does exist also in in, in uh, VisiLogic. Um, someone asked me about how to connect remotely to the system so because i explained the architecture and it's a system Okay, so as we discussed on the previous uh, uh, um, webinars, the communication with our PLC can be done on various ways. However, the most common in order to, on, on, on the initial stages, I mean, not after the application is ready, when you're trying to get there, would be a VNC or um, a, a web, uh, um, uh, and in addition to that, not only the web browser and the VNC, you can also connect directly to the PLC from the internet and, and just program it. You know, if, if the PLC is connected to the internet, all you need to do is get to the address and pass the security and you can write your code and, and download it. Okay. Um, what else? I have some additional questions about VisiLogic and its limitations. I can answer that. I think it'll be best if I'll send it a bit more in details on the email you'll get at the end of the webinar. I think it can can explain and assist, and I don't want to waste uh, uh, the time for everyone that are not interested in that. Okay. I have a question. Is the server work with communication cable uh, uh, with the PLC or you should connect it using IO. So the uh, servos working with communications, okay? That what eventually give me the possibility to change everything, whatever I need, whenever I need it on the drive side. And that's why you can have the remote control very effective because the drive eventually communicates using the PLC with you, okay? I have some questions about uh, uh, steppers. I can say currently we don't have steppers and, and steppers can be replaced with a servo. However, when you're trying to replace a stepper with a servo, please note these two motors have different properties. Okay, so uh, a servo has its own capabilities and advantages. Stepper has its own capabilities and advantages. Usually uh, replacing a servo with a stepper is possible, however, some Sometimes gearbox is needed due to the closed loop uh, difference and due to the fact you have higher inertia uh, on, on the stepper motor, so it, it can overtake higher inertia ratios as well. I'll answer two more questions. Um, will you will we introduce 120 volt drives? Okay. Um, Currently, we're not intending to introduce 120 volts drives. You can use two phases of, of 120, and that's why you'll have 200 or 230. Okay, that's okay. However, a single phase of two uh, of 120 is not something we're going to introduce soon. Um, and basically, because servos are industrial product, it seems like more and more acceptable demand uh, uh, from the machine uh, uh, builders and, and from the, the customers that they can know and can deliver these kind of voltages. Okay. 
someone asked me if it's possible to program using uh, C or structured text. These are uh, good questions and, and eventually the answer is depends what Unilogic can uh, provide and Unilogic as you know can provide C programming it's not structured text it's actually a C okay um, I think ah one, one more question it's it's a good one, good one so uh, someone asked me about the French example how did they use a CNC and how did they make the arc okay so the answer is they didn't make the arc by moving because if you notice they were two linear axes okay one of them was responsible for up and down and the other was responsible let's call it for left and right so the arc was created by the milling head itself because it's round okay so let's say if you take 10 millimeter a diameter uh, 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 tool and, and you start uh, uh, milling you'll have a 10 millimeter arc right and it just do a back and forth movement you don't have the additional axis to control the width okay oh i have another question last one um can we use the ready-made motion program with uh, third-party uh, servo motors so since it's a full vertical solution no additional components can be part of it I mean as you know Unitronics for years over years we support every component uh, that has the communication protocols we're, we're providing however the programming cannot be done using our function blocks because they're uh, only for our vertical solution the scope as well and the ready-made code as well. Okay, so these whole capabilities are supported only when you work vertically. Um, basically, that's it for now. For all of the questions about interpolations and multi-axis and so on, I would like to answer that because it's important for me to explain that. Okay, we will have uh, multi-axis and uh, interpolation capabilities uh, in the future when we will introduce a, a proper ethercat solution over can open we're not intending to offer this kind of solution uh, so you should wait for the ethercat on the ethercat we'll have a phase in which we introduce this kind of solution and then you'll be able to synchronize access uh, and and, and uh, master slave and coming and, and so on uh, but it won't be introduced to the can open series and the main concept is pretty simple. The majority of applications out there doesn't need that. So for the minority of them that does need that, though it seems like it's growing demand, we will uh, supply this kind of solution soon. Thank you very much uh, for joining me today. Um, that's it for today. I hope you find uh, Unitronics One integrated solution useful and beneficial. And in particular, during, now during the uh, current crisis and, and the pandemic, I wish you all uh, uh, health, keep safe, keep smiling, and bye-bye. Uh,